Great morning. You are listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. So this month, we're talking about decisions, right? The decisions, and we've talked about how we need to be informed when making decisions, how decisions can affect our lives and change things in our lives, and um, just different things and about situations that can change based on decisions. We've discussed being responsible for the decisions we make, owning them. We've discussed these things, whether in the podcast, across, across other platforms. But this week, the title is called Knowing the Truth. Knowing the Truth. You know, I am a person who loves people. I just, I do. I love people. I don't always like people. Um, sometimes people do things that are like, mm, uh, <laughs> so you can love someone and not like them or not like the things that they do or the way that they treat you or like the things that they do to other people, but you still love them, right? So anyways, I love people and I love hugs, right? One of my goals is that when I hug people, I want them to feel like they're being hugged by God, right? So, um, so often, um, people, certain people will hug me. Um, and, uh, when these people hug me and they say, I love you, sometimes I will say to them, I know, and they giggle, but then I go on to explain to them, I want you to know that I know that you love me. And what does that mean? Really? Well, I'm not naive enough, uh, though I wish the world was a place where everybody just loved everyone and respected them and was good to them. I'm not naive to know, to, to believe that, you know, everybody genuinely loves me or that everybody um, who says they love you, acts like they love you, are for you. I mean, if you live five days on this earth, you understand that, right? But there are people who will hug me, who will tell me they're praying for me. There are people who, who root you on and you know in your heart that they are for you. There's a difference. Like even for instance, in a hug, there's a difference in a hug. When you hug someone and you know that you are loved by that person, it does something different to your entire spirit. So what is loving to hug people and knowing that they love you? Um, have to do with decisions. The decisions you make are based on the things that you know. Like, um, for instance, when kids are in school and they might be being bullied or tempted to uh, give way to um, peer pressure, knowing that they are loved by their parents, knowing that they are loved by real friends and that they have a comparison, something to compare that thing to, to say, ah, this don't quite look like love because the people that I know love me don't talk to me this way. The people I know love me uh, pour into me. The people who I know love me builds me up. The people who I know love me don't take from me. Um, so when we know things, it affects our decisions. But when you are in situations where you have to make decisions, whether a teenager, a child in school with peer pressure, or you're dealing with the pressure of the enemy and the spirit, what we know affects how we respond. It affects, it just literally affects how we respond. At one point in my life when I didn't know that I was loved, my response was going to be suicide. But in this point in my life, in my grown life where I know that I am loved, I am adored by other people, where I know that I'm valued, when I know who I am, I can walk away from some situations. I can walk away from relationships, friendships, um, or uh situationships <laughs> and I say situationships not in a way that the world might think of situationships or just like people you you know you hook up with but when I say situationships that's my explanation of when you realize that somebody's not for you right so I can boldly walk away from those things I could stand in the face of things that in the past would have broken me but now it becomes my strength because I know who I am in Christ Jesus And so I know that because there is no lack in God, that there is no lack in me as his child, right? So, um, and not just, let's let's talk about not just um, myself, right? Let's consider you. What are some things that you know? What are some things you need to know that are true, that will help you break cycles and hangups and habits and all these other things that you might have been struggling with your entire life? 
what is it that you need to truly know and let settle in your spirit, right? Say, for instance, it's easy for us to um, judge people sometimes, right? We can look at a situation and say, well, this person's in this abusive relationship or they're in this relationship that everybody else around them can see is detrimental to them, to their mental health, to their everything. And we think, why can't this person just walk away? Well, the truth is that we can know something logically. We can know that abuse is wrong, right? They know it, but they don't know that they don't that they deserve better. Hear me again. You can know that abuse is wrong, but not know that you deserve better. And you might think, how is that possible? Because they don't know their value. They don't know who they are. There's no truth in how they review how they view themselves. When they look at their situation and they look at them, they are full of lies in their mind of I'm not enough. This is the best I can get. Um, they're broken because they're like, hey, they stopped believing that God has greater and better for them. I once heard T.D. Jakes, who was preaching and he stopped in the middle of his, in his sermon. I wouldn't say he stopped, but he let the Holy Ghost use him in that moment. And he said, you know, I got to stop right here and say something to you. To you guys out here who have been heartbroken, who've gone through divorce, who've gone through relationship um, mishaps, he said, and you're bitter and you're angry and you can't seem to let it go. And you're saying, how do I let this go? And you genuinely, sincerely want to let it go, but you're still angry and bitter and you're leaning towards hate every single day. This is only happening in your life because you have stopped believing that God has something better ahead for you. When we know that where we are, if it doesn't look like what God said, then that that greater is yet to come, then we find strength to be able to move, to walk through a situation and to do it without bitterness, without hate and without continuous anger. Now, I'm not saying that any of those emotions are wrong, like being angry that someone broke your heart or being angry that someone took advantage of you or stole something from you or um, is using you or any of those things. Yeah, sometimes we need a holy indignation too when we're battling things in the spirit and we get sick of the enemy. At some point, you got to get sick of things. You got to have that indignation that moves you to either repentance, to change something about your life, to stand up, to set boundaries. You got to have that. But Bitterness does not become your life because remember we said here at the podcast that we have boundaries without bitterness, right? So it's about what we know, what we know, what do you know to be true? Because see, a lie can be your truth. The lie that you don't deserve more, the lie that you are um, somehow losing out by moving on or or not allowing people to be close in your circle. I am going to help you though. You are losing something. You're losing the version of you that used to settle. You're losing the version of you that didn't know who he or she is. You're losing the version of you that no longer serves or fits the version of you that you are in the season and the version of you that you are becoming as you continue to lean into God and to seek him. Um, my struggles often is um, um, feeling like uh, or knowing that sometimes uh, people around me may not understand um, my thoughts about something that they may not understand why I'm doing something I'm doing, why it seems or appears as though what I'm doing is out of line or out of place. But when I know that God has spoken something to me, when I know something, then, man, you can't shake me on that thing. Now, it doesn't mean that I don't need balance at times, right? And that I don't need my friends to sometimes say, hey, listen, I need you to get some sleep or, hey, focus. Um, But I also have to balance it because sometimes we know what God has said to us. Not sometimes, but yeah, sometimes we do. We know what he said to us. But in certain instances, we'll let something that man has said, man being just a human being in in this conversation, not as far as male or female, but may a human being who has all the great intentions in the world 
um, for us, but they're giving us misinformation all because they genuinely love us and care for us. We saw this in the Bible when Jesus was telling the apostles about how he was going to, uh, be, you know, go to the cross. And Peter was like, no. Nah. And, um, you know, he, and he had to tell him, he said, get behind me, Satan. Not because he thought Peter was possessed with a demon or he thought Peter was evil or he changed his mind about him, but because he knew where Peter was speaking was not from what he knew about God and what he knew about Jesus. Cause see, he knew that Jesus was his savior and he's the same one who got out and walked on water at the command of God. He was the only one that God gave the revelation to that Jesus was his son. So he understood who he is, but he knew in the moment that he was speaking, that he was not speaking in unison with what God was doing in the earth through Jesus Christ. So Jesus was bold enough to say, get behind me, Satan. Because he knew that there was um, an influence. So even though his intention was good and from a place of love, he he could not see past what he thought Jesus should be doing in that moment. Sometimes people can't see past what they, they think you should be doing in a moment or in a situation. It doesn't make them bad. doesn't make them evil. doesn't mean you have to mistreat them or any of those things. It just means that in this single moment, I can't hear you because what you're saying is not in agreement with God. Because I know what God said to me. I know what he's spoken to me. I know what he's called me to do. Probably about a month or two back, um, at least, someone came to me and um, a couple months ago, and um, they knew about something God had spoken to me that he had promised to me, them and probably a couple dozen other people. Not because I actually told them, but because even though they initially did not believe like, Hey, why is she walking this path? Why is she doing this? All literally these people had to return to me and say, you know what? I had to repent because God showed me that this is his will for your life. This is what he told you to do. Well, I also knew that it came to a point just like with Abraham, when God told him to sacrifice Isaac, right? And he took Isaac, he bound him to, uh, to the altar. And prior to that, Abraham spoke in faith that, Hey, when, um, we're going to go worship. And when we come back, the lad and I, lad and I will return to you. So by faith, he knew and understood that, hey, listen, uh, I got to go do a hard thing because God told me to. So he went that direction. Well, he, he put him on the altar. And in the, in, the, in the last moment, the Lord sent the angel. The angel told him, hey, look, stop. Now God knows that you'll serve him. Now God knows that you'll do whatever he's called you to do. Didn't mean Abraham heard God wrong when he told him to lay his son on the altar. It just means that because of his faith and what God saw in Abraham and he was able to test and prove him, he said, I got a better way. So now you can stop because I told you that you heard me, you trusted me, you believed me blindly, you look like a fool. It was so much so that at times he didn't tell nobody. He didn't even tell the boy. The boy said, where's the sacrifice? He said, the Lord shall provide for himself a sacrifice. I can imagine that walk up that mountain, up that hill, up that mountain where he was going to sacrifice his son, to sacrifice the promise. And God turned it and said, hey, no, now I'm going to let you do this. I'm going to bless you real big in this area, right? He had to know the voice of God and understand it. This morning when I woke up, the Lord said to me, he just that scripture he, he put it in my spirit really the scripture came up um and he said as i was worshiping and praising that the scripture where it says that my sheep know my name and a stranger they will not follow and then i got a revelation right that he's not saying that you'll never hear the voice of the stranger that you'll never even be tempted to follow the voice of the stranger but in the end you won't follow him you won't follow him because you will know the truth, because you know his voice, because you know what he has said. Knowing the truth is every single thing. It will literally change how you respond to things and it will change your decisions. Because you see, Abraham could have literally got stuck on the fact, well, God, you told me that before. So I'm going to just stay here. I'm going to just do this particular thing. And his son would have been dead and none of us would have, would have inherited the promises through spirit where we were adopted, right? And we operate as children of Abraham by faith. Had he been stuck on what he knew God said, he wouldn't have been able to operate in this in the, that, that season of 
or in that moment where God was saying something different. Don't miss what God is saying right now because of what he said in the past. This was not in my notes. This was not in my anything. But I'm letting the Holy Spirit do what he does today. Because see, the thing is, is that this is never about me. It has never been about me. It is about those of you who are listening. So whether it is October 25th, 2023 or October 25th, 3023. God literally had you in mind. You have been prayed for. You will be prayed for because God knows you. He knows where you are. He knows that you needed to be reminded to trust what you know about him and to have knowledge when you're making decisions. You see, because like when you know something, that thing's in you. It's your truth and the truth sets us free. Lord, I thank you. Like, when I was 12, I didn't know that my mama loved me. Like, I didn't know that my daddy loved me. I didn't know that my sister and brother loved me. Not because they failed me, and I need to say that, but because the enemy was busy. So, hindsight, I can look back and see my parents got married at 17 and 19. And by the time I was birthed and my mother had me, she had just been 20, maybe a month, right? And I was her second child. And I have that knowledge now. I have that purview that I can look back at it, right? And I can see that. But greater than that, right? If I base my life now in this season on what I knew then, I would not have my best of friend in my mother. I would not have the greatest cheerleader on this earth in my mother because I would still be looking at her and only wanting to know her or making a decision based on what I knew about her as opposed to making the decisions that I make now based on what I know about her. Uh, John 8, 31 through 32. I hope I am doing this word some justice, Lord God. John 8, 31 through 32. I'm reading it from the English Standard Version. It says the truth will set you free. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in me and my word, if you imbi- if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. He says, so Jesus said to the Jews who believed him back to that belief, to that faith thing. I will never get away from it. I will always be able to tie it in who believed believed as in past tense just like she who believe she who believes because it's a continual thing we believed him in the past based on our staple scripture uh because she believed god and counted it to him as righteousness like she believed that god that spoke a word to her right um i'm sorry i read two scriptures together so when we talk about luke verse 1 and 45 that is our staple scripture right and I also combined when he said that because Abraham believed him, it was counted unto him as righteousness. But it's all the word. I just merged it together, right? None of it's any less true because I quoted the two scriptures together. But our staple scripture also being read, actually being read from the New International Version, is this. It says, blessed is she. And again, I always fill this spot in with my name. Blessed is Vivian, who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Believed it. Believed it already to be so, right? So in this scripture, back to John 8, 31 through 32, he says he spoke to those who had believed him, who had believed him. I mean, they had already done it. They were in on this thing. They knew who he was. They trusted his his voice and who he is. He said, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I love this scripture for two reasons. One, it speaks of freedom. And the other, it speaks of strategies. And you're thinking, where's the strategy in that? Well, um, he says, if you abide in my word, you will know the truth and it will set you free. The strategy is the abiding in his word. That's how we get set free. We abide in his word. That means we are um, meditating on it, sitting in it. It becomes our life. It's like the air that we breathe abide the definition of the word abide is to accept or act in accordance with be able to tolerate um someone or something to abide to abide 
in his word, to stay, to remain in it. Meaning, let it be your life. Let it be the only thing you know. When you know his word, when you abide in it, when it's in you, it will set you free from every lie that will come. Again, the stranger going to speak, but we won't follow him. I want to I want to share this, too, and I don't know if I shared it last week or the week before. I was listening to this sermon and he talked about how um, uh, it was actually uh, Dr. Joel Tubman. And he said um, uh, the sin isn't in a struggle like in the in the middle of like where we are struggling with something like we, sometimes we're led to believe that that's the place where sin occurred. But no, the sin doesn't occur because you have to battle and figure out what's truth and what's a lie. Sometimes we're made to believe, oh, you're weak. You should have known immediately that that was uh, a lie. But that's all, again, an enemy's condemnation and to come against you and attack you and to make you self-doubt, make you doubt who you are, make you doubt your abilities to discern the word of God. But that comes in life because the enemy will never stop doing what he does And the word tells us that we have to bring into subjection every lofty thought that raises itself against the knowledge of God. Like it tries to uh, bring itself above what you already know of God, right? So there's going to be a battle. There is going to be a place where you have to discern what is true and decide on what you know to be a fact. Not, I'm sorry, what you know to be true. Because something could be a fact, but I don't mean it's true. Like 20 some odd years ago when my son was born, it was a fact that his vocal cords were paralyzed. It was a fact that the doctor saw no other way out than to put a trach in my son's throat and make him talk through a little thing for the rest of his life. But that was not truth because truth was is that at the age of 12, when God saved my life from suicide, he told me who my kids were, who my son and daughter would be, how he would use them in this earth. And so there was no way that I was going to agree with what was a fact when it didn't come in alignment with what I knew God had told me. So this mama walked the the room of the Ronald McDonald house all night in prayer, making declarations, proving God, saying, hey, I need you to come through. This ain't what what it looked like. This is not what what you told me. This does not align with what you said. And because I know what you said, I'm not willing to accept what the doctor said. I could have accepted what he said and told him to put a a, a, a trach in my son's throat. But instead, I knew what God had said. And I put a demand on on heaven, on the whole Holy Spirit. I put a demand on on God. And that might seem like, how's she going to put a demand on God? He told us we could. How about in Malachi 3? He says, prove me. He's saying, come and test me. Challenge my word in this area. Challenge me. See, when you know the truth, you can come to boldly to the throne of God and find favor and help in the time of trouble because you know the truth. You know who your God is. You know his heart. You totally 100% understand who he is. So you come with that knowledge, with an expectation of a result different than what you see. Again, strategy, abide in his word. We have been placed in position the position of children of God. We are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Embracing the truth of our salvation sets us free from sin. Jesus set us free thousands of years ago, but until we embrace this and accept it as our truth and accept him as our savior, then we cannot truly live in the joy of the Lord or in his salvation. So it doesn't make null and void that Jesus died for our sins, but unless I believe, unless I know that to be true, I won't live like it is. I won't accept him as my savior. I won't get baptized. I won't declare his word over my life and expect it to perform what he said it would perform. All because I just didn't believe or I didn't embrace the truth of his word. We have to continuously declare the truth of God's word over our lives in full faith and assurance that his word is true and his promises are as well. Well, before we go, I want to... As always, thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast, viewing the podcast on YouTube, um, following us, not because like it's about us. It'll never be about us. But each week that we show up and we see that you are showing up consistently, that means you trust the God in us for us to deliver the word that he's given us to you. And so we thank you for that. We don't take it lightly. 
this isn't just something I do every week and I hit a check on the um check box the checklist because I do have a checklist. Um <laughs> But it ain't about the checklist. The checklist is to make sure I do everything excellently. The checklist is to make sure that I don't miss anything. The checklist is to make sure that I'm being consistent in the things of God. But this is not a checklist to me. This is literally about an opportunity that God has given me to, even through brokenness, heartbreak, all the things that life has thrown at me, to show that his anointing, that his favor, that his call on our lives, that his word is true and that we can operate in it that it's real and that he is God and that he's somebody that we can truly believe because it without faith it is impossible to please God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him I just want to spark something in you that makes you diligently seek the God that we serve so this this week we want to shout out the following locations between the blog again between the website i thank you guys for following us we have been at vivianbell.com for decades like for a while um and we 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 rebranded and that's a shifting of everything but you guys followed us over to mind and what matters now we thank you for doing it we thank you for our faithful listeners to the podcast and so we're going to announce the places that we in the last seven days where you guys have listened to us from and we want you to know that we are and we'll be praying for your countries your nations your cities your states and so we thank you guys who followed us over to mindingwhatmattersnow.com from the U.S., from India, from Canada, from Germany, France, the U.K., J- Japan, and Nigeria. Then in the states of the United States, uh, you guys came over from Florida, of course, Georgia, Texas, Minnesota, South Dakota, Oregon, Iowa, North Carolina, Ohio, Tennessee, Nevada, Missouri, and Washington. And you guys continue to listen consistently in the United States, of course, Germany, UK, and India. And I see the crossover in the places. I don't ever miss that. Um, So if you are listening and and, and following us in both places, you get double prayers. Uh So, um, and that's just because we go through the list and say, hey, Lord, this week we ask you to bless the country of Germany and Canada and France and all of that. And so we hit the website prayer list and we hit the podcast prayer list. And then we pray for our city, our nation, our state, our families, our home in this world. Um, so for the podcast, you guys are consistent again in the U.S., Germany, U.K., and India. And then the states of Florida, Washington, Virginia, North Carolina, California, Ohio, Texas, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Georgia, New York, Arkansas, Michigan, Illinois, Tennessee, and New Jersey. And I will not bypass Tennessee and not say thank you to those who are listening to us in Cordova right outside of Memphis. That is my family, my girl, my my ace, my true blue, my mama, Ever Janelle. Thank you for your support, for your prayers, for listening, for being she who believes not only in God, but who believes in your daughter. And um, I thank you. And I want you to know that I believe in you too. I believe that God still has many more years of life for you. That the things that have been desires of your heart that you felt like were um, that you had to bypass while you sacrificed being a wife and a mom and just put helping to put a roof over our heads that God has not forgotten you, lady. So know that regardless of what things have come your way, that God will still bless the work of your hands and use you mightily in this earth. So know that you are loved and um, I thank you very much. Well, again, you guys have listened to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell. And I am indeed She Who Believes. I look forward to seeing you here next time as we continue to talk about decisions. Um, Keep your eyes open for some really awesome things. Oh, before I forget, literally, it is available as of today. Um, It is called The Shift. It is a mindset transformation workbook um, that I have um, completed. Uh, and you guys can get that now on Amazon effective today. It is live on Amazon. Um, and, uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. This book is, uh, this workbook, it is considered, um, I want to say counseling in in pages, Uh, but, um, it is literally, uh, you got to just check out this 107 page workbook, 107 pages. 
um, and it is going to bless your whole life. So you can get it today on Amazon. You will be able to get it on our website no later than the end of this week, but you are not going to want to miss it. Oh, also, you can get a copy of the e-version of this book for free. Yes, you heard me say free. If you go to the link in my bio um, on Instagram or Facebook, or if you go to bio.site forward slash MWM now one. That is B-I-O dot S-I-T-E forward slash M-W-M now one. And you will see a link there that says giveaway. Why am I giving this away? Well, earlier this month, uh, a group of 30 uh, content creators, authors, um, just amazing women have gotten together and decided to do a giveaway. Now, in this giveaway, and the reason why you have to go to this link, I'm I'm requesting that you go to this link, is because not only will you get my 107-page mindset journal for free, mindset workbook for free, you're going to also get tools for your business. You're going to get uh, spreadsheets that will help you analyze your business, help you do all of these things. There are women in this group that are like super amazing and have created things that you need that you don't have to actually not only create for yourselves, but if you catch it um, and get signed up no later than tomorrow, tomorrow's the last day, I'm sorry, um, you will be able to get these things for free. After that, after this giveaway, you're going to pay for this stuff. This 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 107 page full color workbook is $37 on Amazon and on my website. So go cop it today. I promise you it's going to bless your whole soul. Well, again, you've listened to the podcast, She Who Believes, and I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. God bless you and have the most amazing wonderful day.